Hello and welcome to another episode of Tableau in two minutes. Today we're going to be covering how to create Excel style conditional formatting within uh, Tableau. So one of the uh, challenges of Tableau is that it's quite difficult to color different columns by different items. See if we wanted to uh, change the color, the word color on this particular graph and we wanted to do it by discount, we drag it up to the color shelf, but every uh, column here is colored the same. If we wanted to color profit by profit and quantity by quantity and sales by sales, we'd have a much harder time doing that. But in Excel, it's very easy. So here you can see we have sales, higher sales numbers in, or sorry, higher profit numbers in uh, green, lower profit numbers in red, sales from uh, white at zero up to uh, this darker green when we get up to the 330,000. And then quantity, we have these little icons representing the total number of products sold. Now. That looks easy, it is easy in Excel, but it's a bit more challenging in Tableau, as I said. So what we're gonna create is this type of a graph, or sorry, this type of a table, using that style of conditional formatting. So to start with, we're gonna go ahead and just open up a new workbook here. And then we're gonna create a calculated field that represents uh, basically nothing, but we're gonna have, we're gonna call it 1.0 and we're just gonna give it the value 1.0 and this is something we're going to use to manipulate the layout as we uh, build our table here. So the first thing to do we want to look at this by subcategory so we'll drag out subcategory to create our first column here then we'll take 1.0 and we're going to drag it to the columns shelf twice and then we're going to change the aggregation to be average to be average and then on this one, we're going to click on this downward arrow on the right hand one, and we're going to go dual axis chart. Now you can see that gives us a single uh, axis, or actually it gives us two axes, one at the top, one at the bottom, with only a single dot all the way down at 1.0. It doesn't look like a table yet, so let's make it look a little bit more like a table. If you remember from Excel, the very first column is profit. So we're going to go ahead and set that up now. We're going to edit the axis. We're going to click synchronize dual axes. We're going to set the value to be zero to two. And then we're going to change the title to profit, which is what it was in our very first column there. Now we're going to go to tick marks. We're going to remove all of the tick marks from the top axis, and then we're going to click OK. So Remember, no tick marks. Then in the general screen, we want to synchronize dual axes and set the fixed range to be zero to two. And you'll see why we do that in just a second. Click OK. All right, so now we have profit labeled at the top of the axis. We have a single axis going down. And then we have all of our dots in a line down the middle. Let's do the similar thing with the bottom axis. We're gonna go edit the axis. It's already set it to fixed because we synchronized the dual axis. We're just going to delete the title so we don't have a title down there. Then we're going to go tick marks none and minor tick marks none. Click that and there we have just a single line of items going down the middle. Now we do have to do a bit more obviously because we still have these little lines representing things on the background of the graph here. So we're going to go to format, then we're going to go format and we're going to click on lines which is this little stacked set of lines here click on columns, and then we're just gonna set all of this to none. So we go none, 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 none. All right, perfect. Now we have an open background with just a single set of dots going down the middle. What you'll also notice is that, close the formatting, when we set this up on the marks card, we now have three different versions of the marks card. So we have these two items up here creating our dual axis chart. And we also have all average 1.01 .01 and average 1.02. Now we can manipulate these individually to try and create the same sort of effects that we were creating in Excel. So if you remember on the first column of our example here, we just had profit colored by profit. So what we can do is we can take profit on the very first marks card here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take profit, drag it out to the label, and then we're gonna take profit and drag it out to the color. We're gonna change this chart type to text. And then you can see we've created something very similar looking, so it's all colored by our profit. 
we have the profit in the thing, but we have these big annoying dots in the middle. To get rid of those big annoying dots, we're gonna go to the other marks card. So the average 1.02, click on that. We're gonna change the chart type to circle shape square, doesn't really matter. Then we're gonna make the size as small as possible. See, so now we've got tiny little dots in the middle. And then we're gonna to go to the color and we're gonna scroll all the way down to make this opaque. And that gives us our column with profit. Excellent. Now, using the same sort of technique, we can build out our other columns. So we're gonna take this field again to build our second column, which is sales. And in this case, we're coloring the background. So we want to go to drag our 1.0 out again. See, sum of 1.0, sum of 1.0, whoops, I missed. All right, and then we're gonna change again, change it to average, change this one to average as well. Then create a dual axis chart. Then we're gonna edit the axis. This one we called sales, if you remember. Whoops. Gonna sales, synchronize the axis, fixed, zero to two. Get rid of the tick marks. Okay, that creates this one. We're gonna create a second one. Just delete the title, go to the tick marks, remove the tick marks, apply none. All right, now we're in good shape. So you can see that by creating this other dual axis chart, we've now got a second, sorry, a third and a fourth marks card. So number three and number four. Now, in this case, what we're gonna do is we're going to, again, we're gonna put the number on sales. So let's do that on the top marks card. We're gonna turn this into a text chart as we did before. Oops, we're hopping around a bit here. So we're gonna turn this into a text chart. Then we're gonna take sales and we're gonna drag sales out onto the text. And now you can see we have sales all the way down our column here. But we're gonna do something a little bit different. I'm sorry. We're gonna go back, we're actually gonna leave this as automatic. We're gonna remove sales. We're gonna go here, we're gonna set the fourth one to text. And then we're gonna drag sales out onto text right there. Okay, now the reason we did that is because this card, the top one is underneath, and this one, the bottom one is on top. And we want sales, the name, to be on top of our dot, and you'll see why in just a second. So. What we're gonna do is take this field, and this field is now gonna create our background. So if you remember before, all we did was we made the dot really small and then we kind of got rid of it. This time we're gonna manipulate the dot. So we're gonna take sales, we're gonna drag it out onto the color. Now you can see our dot is colored by the sum of our sales. So the darker colors mean higher sales, lighter colors mean lower sales. We're gonna change the chart type to a bar, and then you'll see right now, we have bars going out about halfway across. The reason for that is because if you remember, we set the scale on our axis from zero to two, and the mark, the measure is the average of one. So what we have essentially is a bar going all the way out to one. So what we wanna do is we wanna take our bar chart here, we're just gonna add one to this. So we just double click on the on the pill up here in the column shelf, add one to the average of one. So this is gonna be two, our scale is zero to two. So this is gonna cover all of this column. I'm gonna hit enter. You can see it went all the way across. Make sure this matches. Um, we'll use this in a slightly different way, creating a user form formula because it can also be used to manipulate the layout when you want to manipulate the layout but we're not quite ready to do that uh, just yet so what we want to do is just create that bar add one onto it so it goes all the way across and then blue seems like a bit of a silly color we used that last time so why don't we change the color and we'll just change this to uh, some nice greens there apply okay and you can see that uh, this is getting closer but we probably want to make the bar a little bit wider so that they cover all the way across. To do that, we just click on size, drag the size up, you can drag it all the way to the top, and now each cell is colored 
the background of each cell is colored by the sum of sales within that cell. So we are getting there, getting closer. We might want to make this too just a little bit transparent so that we can see some of our numbers in the background there. Now we're on to the third column. The third column is where we're going to do some clever things with a layout to make sure that we don't have our shape and our numbers over or sitting on top of one another as we had in some of the other ones. So again, to start the third column, we'll just take 1.0, drag it out twice onto the uh, columns shelf here, set the aggregation to be average. Then we're going to create a dual axis chart like this. Do all the same things with our axes. So set synchronized, go zero to two. This was quantity that we were creating on the uh, graph here. And then we're going to turn off the tick marks again. All of the same things that we did on the axis with the other one. And then we're going to do the same with the bottom axis. So we're going to get rid of the title, go to tick marks here, turn off the tick marks. Right now, you remember that when we created the uh, profit column and the sales column, the first thing we did was we drug out the text in order to get the text into the cell. That's exactly what we're going to do again. So you can see, again, by adding a column, we've got two more averages on the uh, top here, and we've created two more averages on the bottom of the uh, marks card here. So again, the second one is always on top. These last two are our last two up here. So we're going to go to the second one. We're going to change the chart type to text. We're going to get the quantity here. We're going to get the quantity here and drag it out to the text shelf. Sometimes Tableau does this where it bounces up and down between marks cards. So make sure you're on the right one when you're manipulating this. And now you can see in our quantity field, we have the numbers for each of the quantities, which is a good start. Now we want to create the shapes. So we're going to go to our other card. So we've just gone up one. We're going to change the chart type to shape. And then we're going to change the shape again, second one up. We're going to change the shape to a filled circle. And remember, second one up, sometimes it jumps around. Um, and then we're going to drag out quantity onto the color shelf. And it's going to color them by the quantity here. Now we had a slightly different color scheme in Excel. You can also go in here and edit the colors and maybe for this one we want to use some purple. Why not? And you can see. But now the shapes and the labels are sitting on top of one another in this graph. So we need to move them somehow. Now if you remember what we did with sales to create this bar and make it go all the way up top is we edited the pill up here to add one so that it then went all the way across. Well, we can do the same thing. One on both of these pills means that they're gonna be centered within the column. But let's say we wanted to move them, say one two thirds to the left and one two thirds to the right, just as we have in Excel here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna edit this one. This one's gonna be our first column. Remember our first column was the quantity shape and the color, and we're gonna go minus, well, it's about 0.33333. There we go. That moves it about a third of the way to the left. Then we're going to go over here, double click on this one, and we're going to go add 0.33333. And that's going to move it about a third of the way to the right-hand side. So now you can see that we have our shape and our column sitting off the side of one another. We seem to have forgotten the title up here. We'll take care of that now. There we go. So now we have profit, sales, and quantity. You can manipulate the size of these columns the same way you would with the other charts. So we can take the uh, the edge here, just drag it across until we get some more reasonable sized columns, some more Excel sized columns. Um, again, you can manipulate the shape. You can set custom shapes in here based on 